here, Swoo? Welcome back for another exciting semester. I was asked to come up here by our friends from uh, SWUSA, shout out to Cameron and Sadie, who are out there. I wanted to introduce something very exciting for all of you. So, for Christmas, who got a new cell phone? All right, so, for those of you that have a new cell phone, or if you have some space on your current cell phone, we have a fantastic new app we want to introduce to you guys. So, up on your screens, I want to show you the SWUSA app. So if you ever say that you don't know what's happening on campus, if you say that you don't know um, what there is to do, this app, which is iOS only right now, we are working on the Android version, but for those of you that do have an Apple uh, phone, iPad, you can download the SWUSA app, you can see what is happening on campus all the time. Also, there's some uh, fabulous new um, features with this. You can download pictures of you participating in activities. You can see what's happening. You can uh, contact us if you have a question or concern. But also, uh, with this app, uh, most importantly, you can see what's the next event coming up. So if you have the app, if you've downloaded it already, you can see that our next event is Capture the Flag. It does say that it is this Friday, but due to weather, we're actually gonna do it next Friday. So Capture the Flag, first event next Friday. Welcome back and glad to see you guys. Well, good morning, SWU Nation. It's great to start another semester to have you in here and be a part of this. A few announcements at the beginning just to remind you, remember to always bring your ID card to chapel, scan in, scan out, so we make sure that we uh, get an accurate count of you. Also, um, if you ever come to chapel and you don't need chapel credit, please scan in or scan out, as the case may be. It helps us to keep attendance and to look at things for our assessment and planning and things like that. So every time you come, always do that so that we have an accurate record. Also, I want to uh, remind you that you can check your chapel attendance uh, on my SWU community tab, chapel. It'll be there so that you can see that. You should do that about every two weeks. If there's ever discrepancy, get in touch with me then. Don't wait till the end of the semester and say, I was there in January. It's hard for us to work through those at that time. So please just help us out, do those things, keep up with it, get your 24 chapel spiritual formation events in. And, um, and even more than that, you're welcome to come to more than that, but we just want you to be aware of that. I'm gonna ask to turn up the house lights for a few minutes, and uh, let's just find out a little bit about you since we were last here. So let's just, um, we're gonna play this uh, game. Stand up if, if you answer to one of these questions, okay? If you can't stand, you can then raise your hand or something like that, but so, uh, people on stage, you can still participate by, by doing that. So let's find out. Stand up if you have seen Star Wars The Force Awakens. Stand up, all right. Before you sit down, look at all those people that are sitting down and shame them greatly for not going to see this movie, okay? All right, sit down. Stand up, stand up if you left the state of South Carolina during Christmas break. Stand up if you left the state of South Carolina during your Christmas break. Great, sit down. Stand up if you left the United States during Christmas break. Whoa, look at these people, all right. Great, thanks for coming back. Thanks for coming back. Stand up if over Christmas break you went snowboarding or snow skiing. Great. Stand up if over Christmas break you went surfing or water skiing. Whoa, three, all right, man, that's great. <clears throat> Stand up 
if you're wearing a Christmas present. If you're wearing a Christmas present, stand up. That's all right, you don't have to show us everything, just asking. Jane got me this sweater for Christmas, this shawl collar. I feel sort of, uh, I don't know, Elizabethan in this thing. It's something like, "Twas the winter of our discontent. Or so, I don't know, but anyway. Okay. Um, stand up if you're a senior and you're gonna graduate in May. Stay standing, come on, be proud. All right, loud and proud, it's okay. Give them a big hand. You may be seated now. Stand up if you're a new transfer student or a new student this semester. If you're a transfer student, new student this semester, stand up, give these people a big hand. If, if you need prayer this morning and God in your life, stand up. Everybody stand up. Let's all stand up. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the beginning of this semester. We thank you for bringing us back together. Lord, we have seen this morning already, we've been north and south and east and west, and we've been out of the country, and we've been in water and snow, and we have been with friends and to movies and to parties and at home and eating great food. And Lord, we come back now to this place to join ourselves together, and we once again say we are swoop. We once again say, Lord, that we are part of this community. And Lord, even though we know that you are here, we invite you again to be here and to be a part of us in our chapel services and spiritual emphasis week and our classes and our athletic competitions and in the dorms and in the labs and when we're traveling and at all times, oh God, we would pray that this semester you would draw us closer to you and as you do that, oh Lord, that you would draw us closer to each other and closer to others, that we might be able to show others what it looks like to be a Christ follower. Lord, invade us. Lord, don't leave us the same. Lord, change us. Come, Lord Jesus, and be with us. This chapel, this day, this semester. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's stay standing and sing together.
the break of dawn, giving blind inside, letting lame and walk as the generation with resurrection life. We are a generation filled with the power of life and the soul. Verses 1 through 4, it says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they come for me. Let's focus on that as we sing this next song.
as we start this new semester, God, that whether it be if we're stressed out about the syllabus we just had read to us or just about any other obstacle that we might have in our lives, God, that we just trust in you and trust that you are faithful and you will always be with us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Chapel, goodbye. See, no, we'll stay. Wow, where do you go after that? Uh, that's Dustin Akui. Dustin is a graduate of Southern Wesleyan University and uh, lives in Atlanta, just moved to Athens actually. Um, they're doing a thing down in Miami. I told him we were going to play the video today in chapel, and he said if he wasn't in Miami, he and his wife would come up and 
sung that live for us. So uh, we thank him for still being invested in us and uh, for in a humorous way of helping us to think about those things that on the surface have style but down below don't have a lot of substance. As we begin this semester, I want us to think about <clears throat> our lives this semester, what we can do, what we can do to make sure that we aren't caught up in that kind of virtual life, but that we're caught up in the real life, the spiritual life, the forming life of Christ, and how it can change us and how it can change the world. I'd like for us to look at a portion of scripture that's probably pretty familiar to you, but I'm using the message this morning, uh, the version of it. So if you want to look it up, you can. It's Romans 12, 1 and 2, and then we'll skip down to verses 9 through 11. But I like this version of it because it's, it's a little bit uh, different and helps me to think about it in a different way. So you can read along on the screen as I, as I read it out loud. Here's Romans 12, 1 and 2, and then drop down to verses 9 through 11. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, Fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Then down to verse 9, love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert servants of the Master. Thanks be to God for those great words for us. Let me ask you a question. Do you know what this is? See it up on the screen? There it is. Who knows? Raise your hand. Sriracha. Great hot sauce. It's be, uh, my son introduced this to me. Uh, after I tasted it, I realized that's what comes on the firecracker roll sometimes when you get the sushi and have the hot sauce on top of it. It's a great hot sauce that a lot of people use. Let me tell you a little bit about sriracha and about some things about it that I think that are important. It is produced by a company called uh, Hui Fong Foods. It's based out of California. David Tron is the founder of Hui Fong Foods and the one who came up with the recipe for sriracha. David Tran, along with about 3,300 other refugees, got on a freighter, a Taiwanese freighter that left Cambodia taking him from Vietnam to California. The name of that freighter was the Hui Fong Freighter, so he named his food company after that. That was in 1978, escaping all the terrible things that were going on in Vietnam at that time. He and over 3,300 other people on that boat came to America. When he got to America, he could not find a hot sauce that he liked. He could not find a hot sauce that was the kind that he was used to. And so he started experimenting. And he came up with this brand of hot sauce. 
and he started to bottle it, form the company. Let me tell you some statistics that I have up through the year 2013. Up through 2013, um, Sriracha was producing 20 million bottles a year. 20 million, 20 million bottles a year. That's 54,000 bottles a day. In Sriracha, there are only eight ingredients. You can get it. Look on the back, read it. Eight simple ingredients. Every um, jar of Sriracha has a rooster on the front and a green cap on the top. Through 2013, every year, he saw double digit sales growth. Double digit sales growth every year up through 2013. And then here comes what I found to be just sort of the kicker of all of this, is that his company spends no money on advertising. They spend no money on advertising. David Tran has this philosophy. He says the product is the advertising. There are t-shirts that have this on it. He doesn't produce those. Someone else does and pays him for the rights to put the t-shirt on there and then for them to sell them. He says the product is the advertising. His philosophy is, if the product is in demand, then it needs less advertising. But if the product is not in demand, then it needs more advertising. And then he says this about Sriracha. He says, you can invest in your product or you can invest in your marketing. You can invest in your product or you can invest in your marketing. You can put your capital and time into your product to make it the best that it can be, or you can put your time and energy into your advertising to create a demand for it. He says, either way, you're going to spend money. It's just a matter of where you want to spend it. The virtual life pointed out that many of us get caught up, get caught up in the fact that we're more concerned about our style or some other person's style than we are about who we really are or who they really are. We're more interested in the marketing and the advertising than we are in the product. This semester, beginning of this time, this first chapel, one of the challenges that I want to give to you is to decide today that you want to invest in yourself. I want you today to decide that you find that it's important for you to invest in who you are. To not just invest in style, to not just invest in advertising, who you might want people to think you are, but to invest in who you really are. To put time and capital, money, into the product that you are. And I would hope that you would put time and effort into your spiritual self. And to becoming the best spiritual person to be formed by Christ so that we look more and more like him. The Apostle Paul in this scripture says that, that we start this, that, that we start this process by seeing that everything that we do is an offering to God. He says you're sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life. We would say our going to class, our taking notes, our, our teaching, our uh, playing athletics, our work in the lab, our friendships in the dorm and at um, Blue Hill, that all of those would be seen as an offering to God. Paul encourages us to see that our lives are lived out for God, in front of God, 
as an offering to God. Everything that we do. It's easy for us to compartmentalize and think that while we're in chapel or while we're at Bible study or when we're in Old Testament class or church or some of those kinds of places that we're doing those things for God. God wants us to not be compartmentalized people. He wants us to be whole people and holistic people and to see that everything that we do, everything that we do is a reflection toward God and points other people toward God, or hopefully that it will point other people to God. He says that we need to be changed from the inside out. And here's where the trouble comes. Oftentimes, we want to make people change from the outside in. Now, it's true that here at this university that we have lifestyle statements, that there are things that we say that we think are best in this community for us to adhere to so that we can live together. Wherever you go, there are always rules. There are always regulations. There are always things that say, these are the ways that we're going to act so that individually and as a group, we can improve, that we can live together in peace and kindness and, and in love. So there are things that we ask you to do or not do because we think they're healthy for us as a community. But at the same time, we hope that on the inside, that God is working on you, that God is working on me, to help me want to do those things, not just because they're part of the rules and regulations, but because I see them as a part of how I grow into my loving of God. There are things that, in a relationship, that you do. If you're married to your husband or to your wife, if you're in a dating relationship uh, to the person that you're dating, there are things that you do for them. Today is our daughter's birthday. I can't believe that I have a daughter that's 31 years old. Oh my gracious, I'm such an old man. Can't believe, I'm thankful. I can't believe it. We sent her flowers this morning. She sent us a picture thanking us for the flowers. Uh, we know the ones that she likes and the colors, and we asked her that, and she got it. Now, do we do that because we know it's going to please her and make her happy? Yes, we do. Because we love her, we want her to be pleased and happy. Do you understand that? In our relationships, it's not just obligation. Well, at some point it is. We know that there are levels, and, and as we go up the taxonomy, that, that we hopefully that we move up those levels. Sometimes we do things out of obligation. If a kid, small kid, is going to a light socket to stick their finger in it, uh, we, we stop them from doing that. We push them away. We cover it up. All they know is that they're obligated not to do that because we don't want them to get hurt. Later on, they will learn that it's in their best interest not to stick their finger into that socket. And so we grow in these ways that we think and that, and that we act and we study these in psychology and human services and, and uh, other classes that we hope that, that we develop ethically and morally as we go along. And part of that is in our relationship to God. We hope that internally we love God so much that we want to please God. It's not because we have to. It's because we want to. I open the door for my wife. I let her go in first. When we get in the car, almost every time, I open the door for her and let her get in and close the door. Do I think my wife is weak? Do I think that uh, she is feeble and can't do that? No. Uh, she could throw me down and open that car door in a split second if she wanted to. My wife is strong. I have, I have literally heard her practicing piano in our house over and over again. And then I hear this 
crazy sound on the piano, and I go in there to look. And I went in there and looked, and she had a Kleenex, and she was wiping the keys off because her fingers were bleeding while she was practicing. She practiced so much, and her fingers had cracked that they were bleeding on the keys. That's tough. I wouldn't do that. I'd say, I'll get that later. She's tough. Why do I do that? It's just because I love her. It's because I want to do that for her. As we grow in our relationships and in this community and in our love, there are things that we're going to do. We want to start from the inside out. We want God to change us so much in our love for him that we just want to love other people and do things for other people. We want to be changed from the inside out. Paul says, let God do his work through you. If we do that, then we begin to choose substance over style. You get that? To choose substance over style. Style's not wrong. Being in fashion's not wrong. Taking pictures and putting them on Facebook and things like that, it's not wrong. But when that becomes our goal, if that's what drives us, if we feel worth by how many people hit like, then we need to reevaluate. And we need to go and see that the substance of A God who loves us says, whether you get likes or not, whether whether anybody uh, reposts your Instagram pictures, whether you have Facebook or not, our God says, I love you. I care for you. So I want us to to say this semester that we want want to to be known from... um, and to change from the inside out, to invest in our spiritual self. I want us to ask this semester that we ask God to permanently be at work and change in our hearts and lives. It's not, I think it's not just appropriate to say, change me once, move me once. I think we need to be in a constant state of being changed. Let's go back to relationships. If you get married and say, I love you to the person on your wedding day, but never say it again to them, it becomes pretty shallow. You would want to say that over and over again to that person. You would want to hear that over and over again. You would want that to be a permanent part of who you are, that you're ever-growing, ever-loving, ever-deepening relationship. Paul says that he uses a word later in some of his works that's called, it's the Greek word metanoia, and it means permanent revolution, permanent change, that God can constantly be changing us. When I was a kid, I heard people talk to my grandparents that they were the age of my grandparents, and they would say to my grandparents, uh, my grandparents' name were Alvin and Marie, and they would say, Alvin, Marie, or sometimes people called him A.D. They'd say, A.D., I need you to pray for me. I can remember as a little kid thinking, why do you need prayer? You're this holy, good, righteous person. What could you possibly need prayer for? As I've grown, I've learned that as they grow in their relationship with Christ, they were being permanently changed by him. And God would reveal more and more to them, and they would want more and more of Jesus, more and more of God, more and more of God's love, to be permanently changed. Let's ask that we be permanently changed, that, that there would be a constant and permanent revolution in our hearts and in our lives. This semester, we're focusing on chapel. In our chapels, we're focusing on things that we can do. Last semester, we talked about who we are and our being. And this semester, we're going to talk about things that we can do, expressions of who we are. If last semester, our overall emphasis was forming, this semester, it is transforming. If it was being, this semester, it is doing. They're both sides of the same coin. We have to have both of them. So we're going to talk about things this semester about <clears throat> how coming to be a Christ follower really messes us up in terms of how the world sees us. Grace from God 
messes us up in a great way. Forgiveness, how we use our possessions. In March, we're going to think about uh, the biblical response to some very current issues, things like what's the biblical Christian response to how we treat orphans or the homeless or people who are hopeless or people who are suffering with depression and anxiety or how to treat people from different cultures or immigrants or refugees. We're going to look at how we can be people who can be change agents because we are permanently being changed. Because a revolution of change is always going on in our lives because of the Holy Spirit. So, we want to invest in ourselves. We want to have permanent revolution. And here's the last thing that I want us to say, I want to say to us is that I want us to love from the center of who we are. That scripture says, love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Don't fake it. And the greatest expression of love is by doing something. It's not just saying something. Not just saying something. Love that does will always triumph love that just speaks. Did you hear that? Love that does will always triumph. Love that just speaks. It's easy to say words. It's easy to speak beautiful things. It's much more difficult to put sweat and tears and effort into that. Love from the center of who you are. Love because Christ loves you. Love because you're loved and you won't have to fake it. If we can do these things, if we can say today that we want to to do all three of these things, or you pick one of these things, maybe God has caught your attention with one of those things. If you can say today that, yes, I really need to spend more time investing in my product, investing in who I am, and less worried about my advertising. Maybe today you need to say, You know, I need to step it up. I need to ask God to constantly be changing me, constantly be challenging me, constantly causing a revolution in me. I don't want to be one and done. I want to constantly be changing, to see better as always before me and not my best always behind me. Maybe today God's saying to you, You need to love from the center of who you are and put your love into action. Don't stay on the sidelines. Don't sit in the stands. Don't just cheer, but get involved and be in the game. If we can do that, if we can do that this semester, if we can pull ourselves uh, and say those things to God and he will pull us along, I can guarantee you this, that you, that we, will make a difference in this world, that we can make a difference in this world. You can invest in your product, or you can invest in marketing. My prayer, my hope, our desire is that you will continue to invest in yourself so much this semester that you will never have to sell yourself this semester. May God make that so for us. Father, we thank you that you love us enough that you won't leave us alone, that you love us so much that you're going to move us on, that you love us so much that you want to love us so that we can love others. Lord, today we invest and ourselves as we come to you. Today, O oh Lord, today we pray that there would be permanent revolution and change. We pray, O oh Lord, that there would be a desire to love from our center and to put action to our words. Lord, in the decisions that are being made now, in the thoughts, in the prayers, even in the uncomfortableness of perhaps where you're moving some of us. 
Let us know that that's the Holy Spirit. Let us say yes. And through the power of a God who created, of a Savior who saves, and a Holy Spirit who empowers, may, may we indeed be changed and change our world for you. Expectantly, excitedly, we pray this in the name of Christ. Amen. Go and be some hot stuff in your world. <laughs>